This has been a party that is built on idealism. This is a party now will have to navigate its future in an atmosphere of power. That's the fundamental difference. When you are building a party on idealism, you bring together the best in people. When you are structuring a party in power, you might well bring in the worst in people because their interest becomes more important than idealism. I have sense that we have changed the political landscape and we must now negotiate the furtherance of this party in the new environment of power. And with power comes the influence of things that were not here before. In idealism, there was a sense of purity. In power, as I said, there is a sense of interest. But I feel so too that I'm leaving the party with some foundations that they can navigate, navigate the road in the politics of power. That to me is a challenge that whoever emerges will have to face up to. And that will require a level of commitment to the party, but a level of understanding of the ideals of the party. First of all, the, 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 the policy positions of the 2010 manifesto emerged out of the 2006 manifesto, 2007, developed by the COP, which was based on widespread consultation throughout Trinidad and Tobago with many other entities. But what happened subsequent to that is that all it becomes policy positions and the government policy, we missed it how in governance. So actually the implementation of those policies, what you find that people are asking us, and especially our membership, is not so much when or what you built, what road, what bridge, what have you implemented? They want to know the how in the governance of it. And they expected that. That was a major expectation of our membership, that we would have been able to bring a change in governance. And I think over the last couple of years, last four years, we have been falling short in terms of that particular expectation. In addition to that, I feel that a lot of the policy positions did not stand still in 2010, but needed further consultation between the parties themselves before we arrived at formal positions, policy positions for the government. And I think as well that COP really represents a uniting of all the various interest groups, representing the society, which is a very diverse group, looking at and representing the politics of pluralism. That third force is also very much interested in ensuring that we stay on issues-based governance. We do not engage in tribal politics. And that third force continues to grow in our country. So while we celebrate that rich heritage, we want that common future for all of us and that we can continue to have those individual identities, whether it is in terms of ethnicities, culture, religion, but we can come together to form that one common future. I say this is because of what we were based on, that was the foundation of the COP. And that is why we were able to amass the support that we got in 2007. Some may say we did not get a seat, but we did get 149,000 votes who believed in these ideals. When we went in in 2010, we went in on that very strong foundation. And we need our members and the people who support this party expected that we would continue to grow that foundation. We will continue to grow the that value system. So my job as a political leader will be to once more inspire and represent these diverse groups and to build back that trust and confidence. And then we can continue to take our rightful place as a member in a coalition government, such as this partnership government. I say this and I think very important, it again comes back to the arrangement, the rules of engagement, the terms of governance that will allow this to happen and allow the COP philosophy to be felt and for that confidence and trust to be reinstalled for the membership of our party. There must be a commitment at the level of political leaders to have this arrangement in place. And if there is no commitment, then we will not be able to move forward with this particular. It will just remain on paper. And that is exactly what has happened here. I came into as the chairman of the Congress of the People in October of 2012. And last year, I can't remember the exact date, but I'll pull it up from the minutes. We did present a paper that we sat and we discussed. And I presented a background paper to our chairman's forum, which outlined the various arrangements, even at the 
cabinet level. Even allowing sometimes we discuss the possibility of even allowing for your own chief whips in the parliament. Um, I presented that, I came back in national executive and we presented that. We did have at one time a discussion at the cabinet level. I do not want to divulge the discussions on that issue. Um, but I would say that at that point in time, there was really no commitment among the political leaders to carry this forward. Um, I've advocated for it, it was part of my campaign, and I will continue to advocate for making sure that this goes forward. Thank you, Mrs. Smith. The political leaders must meet. And I think one of the things that we have to appreciate is that there must be a commitment. And I'm not just saying the political leader of this party alone. There must be a commitment of all the political leaders, of all the partners. But I think it is incumbent upon the COP, the COP political leader, to ensure that this happens. Well, we'll always have, you know, that issue of trying to, the art of compromise, and trying to, at most times, to reach a consensus position. But there are times, I think, that the party has not exercise that democratic process. I think sometimes that we probably needed to do more from the bottom up. The COP was always based on the bottom up approach to governance through our community circles, our executives. And I think that's one of the reasons why the National Council feels sometimes not in an empowered position. Um, I think that one of the issues is that we are supposed to be able to feed in to the policy positions of the government from the parties. And that is the kind of arrangement we needed in a coalition government. We need to understand more, to flesh out, and to flesh out the politics of coalition. And we need to take this to the level of coalition governance. I want to say that I've always maintained and I've stated publicly that leading the partnership has to be dealt with by the membership of this party. And therefore, that decision cannot be taken by any political leader, it cannot be taken by any national executive, and it cannot take, be taken by any national council. It has to be done at a national assembly. Of course, we would have to educate our membership. We would have to look at the issues involved in you know, leading the partnership. But I want to say again, I don't think the consensus is for us to leave the partnership. The consensus is for us to expand the partnership, continue to engage with other partners. We were once, we engage with faith-based organizations, we engage with community-based organizations, we engage with the trade unions, and we have to continue to do so. If we are to prepare and for 2015 and to ensure that we have a strong government, it is important that we continue to strengthen the COP in that role of uniting. We are committed to coalition governance for this country. That's why I want to recognize that the COP is made up of very diverse groups within the party, whether of different religious groups, whether of different ethnicities, gender, age, culture. And as a result of that, like Trinidad and Tobago, you would find that there will always be very strong perspectives. And because of those very strong perspectives, there will be differences. But we cannot treat those differences as if, because I disagree with your perspective, that it is something that I don't like you, and it means I have to separate from you. We can use those very different perspectives to bring the people of our party together, just the same way we can do it nationally. First of all, what we have to do is we have to ensure that we put the rules of engagement at the 30th of June. If I become political leader, the very first thing is to re-establish the rules of engagement among the partners that will ensure at the end of the day that we embrace the COP philosophy. And that requires a new political strategy for the COP, a new political direction that will allow all these people to come back and restore the soul of the COP and ensure that they are participating as we move forward as the COP. But in order to support that, because of who we are, we need campaign finance reform and we need proportional representation and those two items must go on the agenda right away before the 2015 election. In addition to that, we must re-establish our political school, which I intend to do so that we can develop political leaders from the political level right down to the bottom if we are to create a new country of politicians for 2015. Okay,